This is the Midlife Mischief Club podcast with John and Alvin. I was thinking about, you know, what would make a great first episode. And, you know, certainly there's a lot of topics we could cover. Uh, but really, I wanted to jump right in and start with motorcycles. Yay, motorbikes. And, you know, for someone uh, north of 50, uh, you know, it's a a somewhat trepidatious thing to, to start doing. Uh, certainly, there was a lot of people who told me, you're crazy, why are you doing that? Because um, I, I really didn't grow up with motorcycles, yeah, really. I think you said you were one of the oldest people in your training. Uh, by a, by a <laughs> long shot. I mean, it was, uh, you know, probably 20 years plus, maybe yeah. even 30. Same here. But that kind of inspires you even more, right? It really did. And and I I certainly wasn't the best, but I definitely wasn't the worst in my class. Uh, and, and I passed. Cool. Uh, what about Congrats. you? Did, thank you. Did, did you grow up riding bikes or how did it uh, start for you? I, how did I get the bug? Um, I don't even remember what started it, um, but I learned that there was a school through the pandemic uh, yeah. down in Livermore. Okay. And um, and I had a friend who I knew was going to take me through the ropes uh, in my neighborhood. Nice. And so uh, I bought a bike on a lark at, on a day when a friend, another friend of mine said, don't buy the first bike you see. And I did. <laughs> and I brought home the Cowie. Hey, why did I have the same kind of experience? <laughs> Shit. The Cowie 650, I did my nice. training on a little baby Harley Davidson's, which was so funny. Yeah. And then uh, next thing we know, uh, I was doing my training, doing my, my, my micro radius around the neighborhood. It's been a fun journey. Mm. And I'm on my second bike. Nice. And uh, now I'm on a, a Triumph Street Twin yep. 900. And they're very different. But uh, anyway, I'm excited that you jumped in, you did your training, you got licensed, and you got a bike all boom, boom. I did. It happened really, really quickly. And I think for me, it was something I just committed to doing. And I said, look, I have some time now. It's something I've always wanted to do. And why not try it? You know, what's the worst, <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Um, but for me... I didn't want to be unsafe. You know, I know that for someone, you know, a lot of people grow up with riding motorcycles, uh, dirt bikes and, and what have you throughout their lives. I really didn't. And so for me, starting this in my 50s, you know, was a little uh, nerve wracking. Our reflexes aren't quite what they were. No, uh, a friend of mine, a longtime rider said, I don't bounce like I used to. <laughs> and you know that? Yeah, my kid's pediatrician right. says, says, uh, says we're all rubber until we're 25. Oh man, and, and that worried me. And, and me as well. I have an older brother who has ridden motorcycles his whole life. And you know, when I was a kid, We'd go on rides on his motorcycles. And so to me, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that was always fun but not something I ever personally pursued. And so when I started thinking about uh, uh, learning to ride, uh, I told him, because of course, you know, he's my brother, he's, he's a long time rider. Uh, I would want his opinion and advice. He said, don't do it. He said, get yourself a Miata, go drive down the coast in a convertible and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's just, that's not me. That's yeah. not really what I want to yeah. do. That, that, that's, that's part of, uh... The reward is going against all those naysayers. Kind of. And and <laughs> and for me, it was, uh, you said, don't buy the first bike you see. Well, I, I did a ton of research. I I looked at a lot of different motorcycles uh, online and, and pricing. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a pragmatist at heart. I want something practical, uh, not too expensive. Um, and uh, so I wound up finding uh, a 200 cc bike that for me was like the right size, yeah. the right amount of power. Um, Vintage and, retro looking. And it, look, and it has look. a great look. And so for me, that was like the right bike at the right time and not too expensive. <clears throat> so for me, it was kind of like I found the right thing to start with. And um, so, I, so I bought it. And like you, I kind of tooled around my neighborhood and got a feel for it. And then, uh, and then I took my safety course. And, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I had even just a little bit of that pre-knowledge. So, because I think it took a little bit of the fear away. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, I just, I love the adrenaline factor of it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it, 
It, it makes you feel younger uh, when it's not making you feel older. <laughs> <laughs> well, it you know, even when you're not going that fast, it feels like you're going fast. It sure does. And, you know, during my course, they kept saying, you know, go faster, go faster, go faster when you're learning how to swerve and do all this stuff. And boy, you know, maybe you're only going 20 or something, but... To someone who's never really ridden before, you know, going 20 and, and then having to swerve. And next thing you know, you got the fever yeah. and you want to go from bike to bike. Yeah. You were already talking about moving from your 200 to a 650 and yeah, you're, right. you're newly minted motorcycle <laughs> license owner. That's right. Just just fresh from the DMV. And yeah. you're bringing up a great point, which is, you know, when you're getting into this, um, this new sort of sport or hobby, um, part of the the interest and, and excitement of it is choosing your first motorcycle and kind of doing all the research. It's been really fun for me right. uh, to, to kind of take a look at, you know, the different uh, sort of types or genres of motorcycle, you know, cruisers. The versus... gear and equipment shop yeah. stage oh is my God. kind of obsessive. I went nuts on the internet. Yeah. Hearing re reviews of bikes like I'm exactly. sure you did, well, it's super fun. And and as a newbie, there's countless videos talking about, oh, the Ninja 400 is the best beginner bike and all this. Yeah. But that's that's not me. I don't yeah. I don't want that bike. And you know, uh, uh, I really gravitate towards more of the either sort of cafe style or like retro cruiser style. Um, I love the Triumph, you know, Bonnevilles and and the Speed Twin like you have. Um, I also love the Royal Enfield, you know, that they, they yeah. honestly, they're, they've been building motorcycles for almost longer than anyone, Yeah. but their newest motorcycles are really accessible and beautiful. That's nice to hear. I'm not yeah. familiar with those. I love the way they look. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah. And, and for me, uh, trying to figure out, okay, do I get a smaller sort of 350 to begin with? Well, it's probably a good beginner bike. Um, but, you know, now that I'm sort of starting on my journey, now I'm thinking, oh, what about the new 650s? And, you know, would that be a better, more long term uh, bike for me? Because I'll be able to sort of grow into it a Absolutely. little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And because that happens so fast. Right. Like, like how quickly you start feeling, OK, I've mastered this one. Right. Now I'm to the next. And then you've got the motorbike fever. Exactly. You just want to collect them. Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and it's funny. So. So like I said, you know, I have not been riding my whole life. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, still quite new. And, yeah, and and for me, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was safe. I, I took the motorcycle safety class. I got all the gear, you know, all the gear all the time is I'm very religious about it. Um, you know, I want to make sure that although this there are dangers to this, I'm trying to be go about it in like the most safe and at least thoughtful and mindful uh, way. So let me ask you about the adrenaline need yeah. for you. Tell me. I, I'm not an adrenaline junkie. You know, I, I guess when I was younger, uh, you know, I I jumped out of an airplane. I, really? I, yeah. It, and, it, you know, I've, I've done some things like that. But honestly, that isn't, the adrenaline rush isn't a huge draw. It's more of like uh, acquiring a new skill. And yeah. The kind of the self-mastery. It of is. Something. It is. And I think for me, it's being able to jump on a bike on a Sunday morning, go for a, a, yes. a ride, get some quiet and, and uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, to me, it's almost like getting into a flow state where you can't do anything else but that. You're in the moment uh, with the machine. When I was selling the idea to another uh, friend of mine who's yeah. divorced, I said, you know, when I'm going around Lafayette Reservoir, I look at those red tail hawks. And now I feel like when yeah. I'm doing the hills of uh, La Mirinda, I feel like a red tail hawk. Just, you know, yeah. a certain level of command comes with a motorcycle that comes yeah. with few other things. You're right. It, it requires, it does require some physical ability. It requires absolute attention. Uh, and awareness. It does. Uh, yeah. You know, you do have to have some uh, muscle memory and reaction. Yeah. And, you know, there there is more to it. And it boy, interesting, right? Yeah, very. It is. It's, 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 it is like you say on a Sunday. I do feel like it's kind of my meditation. You know, Ooh. you go out there for, you know, an hour and a half, uh, go over the Berkeley Hills. My yeah. favorite, yeah. my favorite is Grizzly Peak. You can get a view of the city and it's freshly paved and you just get to lean and lean. And and I've done that a couple of times with um, with someone on the back. Wow. And just, 
And it was actually tiring uh, when I did it recently because uh, it took longer than I expected to get there from from here avoiding right. freeways. Right, right. But um, it was so fun. I mean, that's something I really look forward to. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still a complete noob. So for me, I really got to build up those skills to the point where I feel comfortable, uh, you know, having a passenger. But that that is something, you know, I, I look forward to. When I was up on Grizzly Peak, you could smell the, the change of the trees that were around us, you know? You could smell the eucalyptus at one yeah, point. Yeah. And then the view of the clouds kind of, uh, you know, scuttling across the city. Wow. It's different from a motorcycle. You, you wow. know, per perspective when you see it like that. So anyway, yeah. it's so fun. That's funny you say that. I, it's it's something that uh, I heard mentioned is is something you don't really think about is being able to actually smell nature, you know, as you're riding through it. Where you know we're in our hermetically sealed boxes yeah. as we drive down the freeway, and we we. We miss out on all of it. It's that. so much more like watching TV, right? Drive, yeah. Driving a car. Yeah. You know, when you're on four wheels versus two. Well, and 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 you tune out. There yeah. you go. How I mean, you know, basically, uh, you know, you you park your brain. You know, you're not supposed to, but look, you know, look, all that muscle memory. That just could be due, 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 due to all those edibles. Well, <laughs> that's another episode, folks. That's another episode. But um, you know, I think we do kind of tune out. Sure. And 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 I think. Uh, you know, choosing to learn how to ride a motorcycle is a way for me to try and maybe tune back in a little bit and, and uh, you know, kind of experience these things that I, I have. Forces us been. to be present. And if we're not present, then we're in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Yeah. I have uh, a friend who just had a hip replacement. And oh my God. one of his goals for, for uh, returning to normal is for us to hit Mount Diablo again. That's we, fantastic. We did it before. And had the best time. He's got an Indian. Oh, beautiful! It's just this gorgeous. long, yeah, yeah, cherry yeah. red bike. Super retro. I actually sat on one. Believe it or not, I went to the uh, the local Triumph Indian. Did you Royal Enfield shop? And uh, uh, the salesperson there was like, "Hey, you know, uh, why don't you sit on this?" And you know, at first I was like, "That's crazy," but I sat on it and and even balanced it a little bit. It's so different. It's very As different. As a cruiser, it sits so low. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it kind of even reminds me of um, those Ke uh, Keanu Reeves bike, mm. uh, which is, uh, he calls it, I think, a sport cruiser. It sits real low. Yeah. He, he's yeah. designed it so, so so your legs go up up in the front. Yeah, got it. And then you and then you sit back. But yeah, he's he was surprisingly nimble on Mount Diablo in his Indian. Wow. Really could lean it nicely. I think there's something to be said about being close to the ground. So on my yes. Triumph, I'm not that close to the ground. So, you know, this is a huge point of interest, especially for someone new to, to riding a motorcycle, is uh, feeling confident, you know, on the motorcycle. Yes. And so the the actual, the seat height is really important. And, and right. the, the more cruiser style or uh, cafe style are a little bit lower um, than, you know, some of the sport bikes. So uh, definitely the adventure bikes are a little bit more uh, uh, very up tall and upright. Sure. Um, so th I think a lot of um, uh, beginning riders sometimes gravitate towards, you know, maybe the Honda Rebels, which are cruisers. The seat height is very, very low. Yes. And so it makes for a great first bike. It's funny. I did an. I did. Uh, I hired somebody on an hourly basis yeah. in the beginning to learn how to ride before I, I went to the, the the training session in Livermore, and I met the guy in San Francisco, and we would go in a parking lot on his Honda Rebel. That's awesome. It it was great, and it's funny because the bike is so smooth. Yeah. That it almost didn't have enough feedback. Hmm. I almost felt like I was in a Tesla. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was that smooth. You know, it didn't have any growl. Right. And I was sitting so real low and I was so, but it was good, I guess. But I mean, what, what, uh, I'm writing now, it just feels so different from a Honda Rebel. I, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it's significantly more powerful as a bike. Yeah. Um, and, but everything has its place. Of course. And, and I think for me, uh, rather than jumping to that, uh, you know, the leader bike right away or the the twitchy, you know, more powerful. I wanted to do it in a more stepwise. Sure. You know, let me start and make my mistakes on a lower powered 
smaller motorcycle oh, and the and skills the, follow you they exactly. say it's the best thing it's just on a, on a smaller bike uh you get to you get to push its limits in a safe way and then right. you take all that skill set to the next weight and the next exactly weight, and that's so good exactly and and so for me finding a bike that was sort of an appropriate one for me i think was really important and then you know i even went out and i got all my gear like before I even had a motorcycle, oh, yeah. Me too. before I, I took crazy. my class, I went out and I got all my gear. You know, I got a, a nice helmet and gloves and riding jeans yeah. uh, and a jacket and and boots, you know. And, you know, could I have gone away with some of the stuff in my closet? Maybe. But I wanted to make a commitment sort of to myself. Sure. That I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it through. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then when, once you own it, you're committed. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a certain, <laughs> certain visualization yeah. too, I yeah. think, with, with trying new things in our lives, you know, like yeah. you start visualizing before you even have your license. Okay. I got all That's this right. stuff. It all fits. <laughs> it, right. And, and it, I think it also comes back to uh, confidence, you know, that I feel like, okay, look, I might fall you know, but, uh, or I might drop my bike or something, you know, but at least I've got a good helmet. I'm protecting my elbows and knees and, and back, um, my, my feet. So at least I've, I've, I've d gone that step. As I did drop the bike a couple times, by the okay. way, the 650. Yeah. And that was, that was a little horrifying. I mean, I'm glad you're okay. Hopefully everything was all it was right. super low speeds, yeah, but, um, yeah. You know, that's where the balance is tough. And uh, there's, there's there's a certain uncontrol with centrifugal force when you have speed behind you. Yeah. And and that's, I think, honestly, when most uh, uh, most drops happen are low speed. You know, you're crawling around a parking lot. Yeah. Something happens, a car backs out. Yeah. And, you know, you it's very easy to break and, and navigate a hill, the, trying to get into a spot yeah. and out of a spot. And I underestimated the weight mm. of, of that... Uh, it was really the Cowie 650, and this one, which is even heavier, I right. have so much respect for it that I'm just, uh, all my attention goes into the bike when I'm coming to a stop or even when I'm just pulling out. My whole perspective on it is to be a little bit more mature and safe and practical. Look, it's a, it's a dangerous activity, for sure. but for me, I'm going to try and do it in at least a very thoughtful, mindful way. Well, I love that. I, I remember... Um, yeah. I mean, all of that's like kind of like yesterday, thinking about how important <laughs> saddle time is. Yeah. And uh, and I just remember, too, I would prioritize like what was most dangerous. Number one right. for me was intersections. Yes. As they say, statistically, Absolutely. you got to think about. And then I also remember gearing down, gearing up, like when I'm going around bends. Mm. Because, right, the more complexity you're adding, the yeah. more you can get jarred. Slow down, right? Slow there we down. Go. And he answered everything. I, I <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, I, and I, it's, I'll go sometimes without riding for a month and think, or two months or three months and yeah. think, oh, I don't, uh, maybe I've moved on from that. And I get back on and I just, you get that just fresh feeling again of wide open right. space and it's, yeah. it's so freeing. I, I think, and that for me was one of the big, uh, drop drawing points, you know, to why would I even do this? You know, cause it is a little bit like why, you know, I, I'm generally a risk averse kind of person, you know, why would I do this at, yeah. you know, 50 plus years old, um, when most people are trying to like de-risk their lives and maybe do things a little easier. Um, and what do you think that is? Is it to kind of, I, I know what the answer is for me. Yeah. I think, well, for me, it was, you know, I've been working from home for many years. And Got some time for a new hobby. Yeah. Step outside our comfort, my comfort yeah. zone a little bit. Uh, do something that does take me out on out of the house, out on the road, out maybe that's into it. exploring nature. Or the... For me, I feel alive when I'm expanding boundaries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also, um, the, the, the adrenaline rush is so good. But yeah, just realizing potential. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I felt, feel that way about other, other stuff that I, you know... Kind of took on during during the slowdown of the world. Abs absolutely, you know? myself as well, and and we're going to get to a lot of those, uh, you know, in this podcast. Um, but I think this was really certainly the, one of the more interesting topics, and also a little, you know, there's a little bit bit of danger there, and uh, 
you know, it's definitely not for everybody. Yes. Oh my gosh, I have a funny side note. Yes. There's somebody who bought a bike and she was trying to wheel it into the garage and, oh, and dropped it. She got injured and that was the end of her motorcycle. No. <laughs> yeah. Knowing your limitations yes. and, and not buying a bike that's oversized yes. and understanding that it's going to require some maintenance or if you do drop it, that you got to be able to pick it up again. And, and I think it is a, a problem that uh, that does, I think, end people's motorcycle sort of aspirations, and it's and it's totally avoidable. That's, I think, really wise advice. Yeah, yeah. Start, starting small and going incrementally. Exactly. As you say, with everything, with speed and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and especially when something is, there is a sense of danger here. Start small. You know, when you get your driver's license, you don't get a Ferrari and go take it to the track. You know, you, you build up your confidence and, and all that. It, it's it's fun. I mean, it, it is a steep learning curve, like yes. you've been saying. Yeah. But um, it's it, it's a worthy learning curve. You know, I still have a long way to go. I have a lot of practicing to do in parking lots. A lot of uh, you know, just learning the basics. But I'm I'm really excited about it. And you know, I, I think if you're, you know, north of fifty, say, and are interested in learning how to ride a motorcycle, I would highly recommend it. Although I would say definitely, uh do your homework what was the name of your training course by the way uh it was the golden state moto uh uh motorcycle safety uh like foundation course very very good yeah. you know i they were kind of uh really nice drill instructors yeah, you know ours, so, our guys were really good very safety yeah. conscious it's called pacific something motorcycle out of livermore okay and so anyway i would i would also recommend those guys I look, if you're going to jump on a motorcycle and I would say, even if you maybe used to ride a long time ago and you're coming back, it can't hurt. I think it's a, it was, I learned a, a ton just taking that course. Sure. Half our class had ridden before. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That was, that was great. That was a confidence builder taking that class. You know, for me, it, it taught me a lot of just basics around handling the bike position, um, uh, almost like more of riding a horse where you're gripping more with your knees and loosening up your upper body. Sure. Uh, Leaning with your head first into a turn. Exactly. All those good things. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. And so for me, it was, well, it was not inexpensive, but it was well worth it to me uh, because I never would have known those things. Oh, it's so much information. And yeah, that was invaluable for me. I was a complete new, new rider. You know, you seem to still be really enjoying it. Um, you know, is there anything for a new rider like either myself or anyone listening that you'd recommend? Maybe that you wish you had known uh, starting out? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think there are merits to sticking with a smaller bike. I mm. think there's something that happens when you start uh, riding motorcycles where you want to go bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And now I look back and I think, especially like, I don't know, if I lived in San Francisco where I'd want something super nimble. Yeah. I would really enjoy having like a 400 right. or something like that. Like I could have so much fun with that. You know, and if I'm, if I'm on a steep hill, I would have, I wouldn't worry as much. Whereas, you know, on my bike, uh, I don't know. I would, uh, feel more pressure. Interesting. Just due to the extra weight and, uh, maybe in the lower gears. I, think, I just trickier? think I might, I might have more fun yeah. in a small radius. I gotcha. On a small bike. I see. Yeah, and I go back and forth. It's one of those things. It's hard to settle. Like I just need a big garage. I, I think I think <laughs> we all aspire to be Jay Leno and have uh, you know a plethora of different bikes for the the feeling or the day or uh, you know I, I you know honestly that's what kind of makes it fun. Uh, you know, do you have a a smaller bike for certain bits of travel or or uh, different rides and maybe a a bike for cruising if you want to take a longer trip. Speaking of which, or, I have a South African friend who just went from Colorado to California over five days. Oh my God. And when he got back, he had a real kind of a rough re-entry. And I kind of have a theory why, because I think he had so much adrenaline and endorphins rushing through him for five mm. days mm. that he was kind of high, you know? And now he's back to this normal life and he got used to having all that good stuff, wow. you know, coursing through his veins. That's got to be exciting to you take know? a trip oh. like that. Yeah. My favorite part was when he was going through the mountains uh, of Nevada and Carson City. Wow. And just mountain riding is something I really want to do one day. 
for me, for someone who's coming into this really new, really fresh, um, there is so many different places to go. Uh, you actually did some uh, dirt bike riding, didn't I did, you? I did, I did. Um, down toward Fremont, it was a weekend course, Ooh. and the teacher, uh, instructor guy was so good. He's a three-time um, a motocross winner. This guy was super good. Um, and it was a completely different kind of riding, yeah. you know, dirt bike riding. Yeah. They, they give you a bike that's special. They All your gear is is special for falling and mm. um it was a great experience i mean there's all different kinds of uh of riding yes uh and and i think you know going into it i think you really need to think about what what kind of rider am i uh am i going to be a city commuter maybe uh then you know there there are bikes that are better for that um am i going to be a little bit off road maybe do some camping uh, then maybe more of the adventure bikes where that have, uh, you know, more knobby tires and can carry more stuff and are a little higher. So yeah. if you do have to go over some all obstacles such good or whatever. considerations, I actually have kind of made a vow to myself that I, I don't ride during rush hour because I think people are really so wound smart. up, you know, yeah. and also at the end of the day, I think people are tired and they just want to get home. So yeah. I just try to avoid that. I try to be like a Sunday morning rider. Around where I am, I'm down in San Jose. Yes. It's it's busy. It's yeah. busy most days, you know, yeah. during commuting hours, after school hours or whatever. Sunday morning, it is dead quiet. It's peaceful. Nobody's on the road. And it's the perfect time. And I actually hear a couple motorcyclists leaving their house, uh, you know, going on a little ride. And for me, that has been Saturdays and Sunday, but Sundays specifically, are the best days. It's so good. You got to pick your times. And I think you're being really smart about that. And I think you really impacted me by saying that. I really pick my times when I ride. And I thought that was so smart. Um, and I'm, I'm going I'm well, to do the same. Thanks. I find myself saying, uh, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out for 30 minutes. And I come back <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes yeah. later, yeah. hour and a half later, thinking, oh, I just needed that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, it's interesting, too. Uh, when gas prices... Uh, went up during a, a period of yeah. the, of the, uh, of the lockdown. Yeah. Um, the prices of motorcycles went really high. It really spiked. Right. It did. And also because the supply chain yeah. was what it was, it really affected the price of uh, automobiles and motorcycles. That's right. And I thought that was quite interesting. You know, it's like people, it's a, it's very, it's very practical, even more so of course, ar around, around the world, you know, to get around by motorcycle. Yes. It is, and and the prices of used motorcycles really haven't come down. So you know, I've been looking pretty aggressively for my uh, for my first bike, and then uh, yeah, bike and, then, two. and then bike two. But um, you know, there are nineteen seventy four Honda, you know, three hundreds or whatever that are four thousand, five thousand dollars. And I can go down to a dealer and get, you know, a brand spanking new bike for around the same price. Isn't that crazy? crazy. So, you know, it is it is an investment, of course. Um, but nowadays, the prices are, are not coming down. So if you do buy a new motorcycle, you will get your money back when you sell it, uh, which is great. It's actually, so it's it's a pretty good investment. You know, it's not like a car that... The minute you drive it off the, the lot, you lose, you know, I don't know, 20%. Just keep talking. I love hearing that. Makes no, me want to buy good. another bike. It's great. No, I'm <laughs> telling you. Well, you know, my my first bike that I bought was used, but uh I might I might buy new for my for my next one because it it is it's actually a pretty good value. Well, I would say let's turn it over to our listeners and viewers. You know, if there were uh, you know, points that you think we missed or wish we had covered. Uh, if there are beginner bikes that you feel are, were great for you when you started, uh, you know, let us know. Um, if there are other topics you'd like us to cover, you know, as, you know, uh, uh, part of the Midlife Mischief Club, uh, please let us know. Uh, myself and Alvin, you know, we're pulling from our experiences, but we'd love to hear from you as well. It wasn't in my contract to do a sequel, John. Well, I'm sorry. Well, we'll uh, my people will call your people. Don't worry. We'll work it out. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. Well done. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.
Thanks for listening to the Midlife Mischief Club podcast. Please be sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can find show notes, links to our socials, and see what else is cooking on our website at midlifemischiefclub.com.